Marvel Bird. And welcome to the Center of Universal Light on this beautiful Sunday morning here in Cottonwood, Arizona. This is the day of honoring our gratitude and thanksgiving. When we give thanks to the source of all creation, our thoughts move away from ourselves. It is one of the ways in which our soul finds a larger way of expressing itself. People are filled with a certain spirit of gratitude, naturally. But we don't express it habitually. And in consequence, our inner <coughs> life becomes crystallized, calloused, and indifferent. So giving thanks to the Creator and being thankful for the joys of life in their many forms gives rise to those ideas and there is a call to action within the whole person. The idea of an all-providing source, always expressing, always giving of its bounty, multiplies and increases in our mind and affairs and the unseen natural resources in each of us. Today we are giving thanks for this bountiful giver for all the good that has come to us. And in doing so, we are fulfilling the law. The law of gratitude and thanksgiving. If we go through life taking everything without gratitude, without thanksgiving, we will not find richness in living, no matter how much wealth we accumulate. It will be a very dry sort of existence. But when we give gratitude, our hearts flow to the great giver of all good for our many blessings. Then we multiply that good in our own consciousness and the good in you begins to express itself in many, many ways. This is the manifestation of the law. Whatever we send out, comes back and is multiplied. Give and it shall be given unto you. So it is as absolutely necessary that we, to our well-being, that we express gratitude, that we give thanks daily to the divine for the bounty. By giving thanks for the good, we pile it higher and higher. And the more things we can give, but think to give thanks for, the larger the world we live in and the richer it will be. So let us cultivate this habit of giving thanks, lifting up our thoughts and words to the spirit of plenty, of prosperity, of joy, of love, of power, of strength, of everything that enters in to life. And do it because we love to do it, expressing the joy of living in a universe where the law of success is so easily appropriated. The bliss of existence is to get into that spiritual consciousness where everything is done through love. The guiding principle of CUL is very similar to the American Indian teachings in which the earth is our mother, the sky is our father, the sun is the centerpiece of the sky, and everything in life <coughs> are interconnected. Our earth is a living, sentient, physical, spiritual being, and our spiritual consciousness comes through our connection with her, the earth. This leads to the holistic worldview that I've spoken of many times. We hold to Mother Earth spirituality or pantheism, and that nature is understood to be one of the greatest spiritual powers in existence. All other aspects of nature, including the animals, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, the streams, are children of Mother Nature. This respect for Mother Nature is as a deity and her children as spiritual beings in their own right lie at the heart of the ideology of CUL. This focus on Earth as Mother leads to a perception of the interrelatedness of human beings with all other animals and a view of the universe as being in cosmic harmony and balance. This is the holistic worldview. This belief underlies the social and environmental activism 
of CUL spiritual practitioners. Conceiving of nature as mother and nature's children as family is the ethical system of spirituality that we adhere to here. It is a simple, simply, it is a simply a <laughs> it is a simple assumption, is what I was trying to say, that we treat the things around us as we would treat our own family or kin. This can become the basis of a transformed world in which our human relatedness, rather than dominion over nature, can be acknowledged. Our vision is to see the world population become ecologically aware and humanitarian for all people, including those of the First Nations and the Third World, who are also just as worthy of respect, honor, and kinship. This is the holistic worldview that we adhere to, and we are dedicated to bringing about. This week is our nation's holiday called Thanksgiving. <coughs> But we will not focus much on the mythical sharing of food between pilgrims <laughs> and Indians, <laughs> except for this. Thanksgiving is supposed to be a blending of two different cultures, one culture helping another survive. It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? The historical knowledge that we now have of what took place is probably very different than what is still being taught to our school children. It is true that the Wampanoag Indian did have a feast called the Grand Sachem's Council Feast. It was because of this feast in 1621 that the Wampanoag had amassed the food that helped the pilgrims survive, creating a new European tradition known as Thanksgiving Day. Ironically, the first official day of Thanksgiving was proclaimed in 1637 by the Massachusetts governor, John Winthrop, not because of the Wampanoag's generosity. He did so to celebrate the safe return of the English Puritan men from the Pequot War. So today we celebrate our gratitude for our abundance our abundant lives, and let's do so with gratitude for the sacrifices made by many people that they gave in the past so we can share what we have today and acknowledge in doing so the disproportionate sacrifice made by the American Indian people. Thank you. Aho. Aho. I'll turn it back to the captain. <laughs> I officially turn the reins over to you, <laughs> Reverend Captain Kimberly.
All right. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of love in this room. There is a lot of love here. This is why I just love this place. We are in the process of becoming community. How many of you were here two weeks ago on November 4th when I spoke up about community? So you know my job is not to lead you into community. My job is to lead you into, who can tell me? Who said emptiness? <laughs> emptiness. My job is to lead you into emptiness. And what is emptiness? It is letting go of anything that stands between you and the community. Today is going to be a community building experience. <laughs> they tease me. <laughs> but right now, Reverend Kimberly has some announcements for you. Something good for today in the Word is grace. In grace, I release every sense of limitation. The spiritual idea of grace is often considered in terms of related words, such as gracious and graceful. They suggest a sense of grace as a quiet state of consciousness that helps to create an easy, peaceful life experience. Grace can be all of that, but it is so much more. Grace is the power I lovingly convey whenever I recognize and express my Christ presence. The Bible reminds me that Stephen, one of the earliest converts, being full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. In expressing the quality of grace, I find the clarity, peace, and power to accomplish the spiritual work that is mine to create. In grace, I release every sense of limitation. And the words from Romans 6, 14, for sin will have no domination over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. The word for today is grace. Many people might not know. <laughs> that this beautiful woman here is having a birthday. And this week, on guess what day she's having it? She's having it on Thanksgiving. She's always seen me 1123, 1123 on digital clocks. It's very psychic. I'm connected, baby. <laughs> well, that's why we at CUL want to honor you with the happy birthday song. Shall we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. prepare for the, our prayer and meditation this morning. <clears throat> Jim Blake, who is the CEO of Unity World Headquarters, recently wrote that spiritual masters and teachers have told us gratitude is like a magnet. When we focus our energy and attention on what we already have and feel grateful for it, we are positively affirming its presence in our lives. And that's better than giving time and energy to what might be missing. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that step four of our affirmative prayer is Thanksgiving, step four, which is an attitude of gratitude. It's essential in establishing a new intention for our lives. In giving thanks, we are declaring that it is already done. We are grateful for knowing that it is already done in the universal mind. In this Thanksgiving step, you may want to say something like, I am so grateful for knowing 
that it is already done in the universal mind of creation. Or, it is with great gratitude that I accept this transformation of consciousness for myself. Or, I am grateful for my perfect health, wholeness, and well-being. Remember to feel the gratitude. Do not allow yourself to be caught up in what the appearances are. Know that it is done and give thanks for it. Now let me lead you into a spiritual mind treatment <coughs> like Ernest Holmes would do. Let's close our eyes now and become present with my words. <clears throat> Creator of all that is, we come together in a circle of positive, loving oneness to create a community where people are willing to move from judgment and converting to a place of emptiness where we can hear and listen to each other in a way that creates safety, intimacy, and openness. We see this community evolving naturally as we let go of anything that stands between us and the center of universal light community, believing something good about everybody, everyone, in this room. See you well, like the I am is all inclusive. There is only infinite love that rules the universe through the law of mind. At the center of universal light here in Cottonwood, we are one with the source, with the infinite presence and power we express our deep conviction and agreement that Creator in me, as me, is me, that we are made whole, perfect, and complete. As children of this creation, this is who we are. This is the truth about us. We wholly accept and embody the realization of the spiritual truth in our lives and affairs. We clearly see the community that we desire is already ours right now. Our entire community is open and ready to receive that good that is ours now. We express our gratitude for the realization that a community is taking place at the center of universal life. Of abundance.
good stuff's coming. <laughs> good stuff. <coughs> Blessings in disguise. Reverend Ellen Devonport recently wrote from Unity Village about thinking of one event in our life that we thought was terrible at the time, but turned out to be a blessing in disguise. She, just asked, uh, she suggested making a list of ten difficult events that came up in your life that turned out perfect despite their initial appearance. It happens all the time. Everyone has them, right? Yeah. Instead of gratitude for happy times, instead today, let's identify the good that came from sadder times. The blessing in disguise. The silver lining. This is to notice and appreciate how often our good comes in drab packages. And how often that we ask that what we ask for shows up first through distress or upheaval. Remember, long-term good can only be seen in hindsight. Today, you here will have the opportunity to stand and share with the CUL community. A look back in time when you now see that what you were that that you were in the hands of a higher power. You were being guided and loved. And all is well. All has been well. All along. Let's bring up the lights, Kimberly. Yes, sir. Our ushers are going to bring our microphones around to you. As you decide you want to stand and Share a blessing in disguise. Oh, we got a fast hand here. We have a hand right over here. No. As individuals must heal and we heal it in solitary and we heal it with community we heal it with like a day like today where we see other people with similar wounds and we know we're not alone thank you Stand up, say your name, and speak about maybe your brokenness, maybe your wound, and how you've overcome that, and the blessing that came through us. You know, 
Kim and I like to joke about the cosmic cube before. It <laughs> comes along and hits us up the side of the head. It's a wake-up call. Four by fours are really bad. <laughs> 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 But uh, they come up for a reason, don't they? They come up to wake us up. Uh, and some of the study I've done about the inner child and healing the inner child, the inner child can get so frustrated that we are punishing it, that we are not honoring it, that it creates a major disaster in our life, a divorce or a firing him from a job or an illness that sounds un unrecoverable, uh, an accident has come up to wake us up, to bring us into focus about what's important, about who we really are, about what needs to be healed in our life. And that's the greatest gift of these events making us aware of what needs to be healed in our life heal the inner child and you heal yourself it is the same and i believe that a lot of what we go through has to do with our relationship with our inner child our inner child is where our innocence is it's where our creativity is it's who we truly are this outer, outer thing, this adult person here, is just the puppet, you know, the inner child is who we are. When we honor, love, and have a relationship with the inner child, so that the inner child trusts us, so that we don't criticize it or criticize anyone else, and, and not hurting ourselves like that. Where we love ourselves. That's where healing comes from. That's where an alignment with our soul takes place. That's where we come into the energy, the healing energy of the divine. Where we recognize our own divinity within ourselves, that it's connected to the divine of the universal mind. Where we come into the same power that Jesus had to heal the lepers, to heal the people. And all we have to do is heal one person, heal ourselves. Everyone here is a healer, but before we can heal other people, we must heal ourselves. That's what CUL is all about. I'm looking forward to next year because we are going to be beginning to form circles smaller circles during the week. This is where real community is going to take place. This is where real community is going to become locked with these, with the men's circles, with the women's circle, with a co-ed circle, with men and women together. Excellent. Sharing our experiences, healing ourselves with the support of people, of friends and family, of people that are holding the space of safety, of love, for us to do our work. We all need this. We all want this. Imagine breathing in light energy, a refined energy from the world of living energy. Breathe in. <coughs> animating light energy from the cosmos. This is the energy that equates with our being in harmony. And having a proper connection with the cosmos, the creator of all that is the divine source. As you breathe out, then imagine breathing out the heavy or dense energy that we have accumulated in our energy bodies the energy that does not serve us in our relationship with ourselves and that is incompatible with our own energy. Breathe that out. Let Mother Earth take it. That's her job. 
exhale and send the heavy energy down to Mother Earth, where it is absorbed. It becomes food for Mother Earth. That's the beautiful relationship we have with Mother Earth. Breathe in the light energy from above, breathe out the heavy energy, and give it to Mother Earth. As we continue doing this, we cleanse our energy bodies, the bubble of energy that surrounds us and infuses our physical body. Continue breathing like this as I give thanks. Oh, creator of all that is. Source of love and energy. We give thanks and gratitude for our beloved Mother Earth. The living being that supports our lives with her air, her water, her plants, and animals. We give thanks and show our gratitude for the opportunity to be here in this dimension, in this physical body, to learn and grow and share our gifts with each other. As we continue to turn our focus inward, we consciously align with this beloved source, our higher self, and we make an intention to allow this day a shift in our consciousness to occur, to be open to that shift in whatever form it may take as we exercise our birthright to command this energy by saying, Creator, we here today command in unity that a healing take place for all people of this world. That a healing come into being for each according to their greatest need, their greatest desire. Bring forth into alignment all the necessary details for this healing to take place. Whether it be for the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, whether it be for our relationships, our financial condition, our perceived mistakes. And we who are here today agree to freely and consciously let go of any resistance or blocks that we may have or have had against receiving a full and complete healing. We give up trying to control the outcome and we simply accept and allow that which is for our highest and greatest good to come to pass. We see it. We visualize it. We feel it. We give thanks for it. And we know that it is so. We feel connected to the love of all that is. We feel connected to everything here in the great circle of life, to everything here in this sanctuary, and to each other. We thank you, thank you, thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done for every man, woman, and child. Today, we see, we bear witness, and so it is. Now let us enter into that deeper communion of healing awareness in silence.
that's one of the ones he used to play with Glenn Campbell. Of course, Glenn would be the fancy one. You know, he'd have the guitar behind his back and everything, and behind his head and playing. And that was for these kids. Thank you for these kids as they go forward to bless all the pride.